Jesus, you reign forevermore. Jesus, you reign forevermore, Lord. There is no one compared to you. You reign from north, south, east, and west. something really special i'm sure god has something really spectacular for you in this week and this day and probably this season so don't miss out don't let go do not allow your emotions get the best of you or the better part of you stay connected stay fake stay stay real stay um in faith Stay trusting God and you're going to see his wonders in your life. The Bible says that if you abide in me and I abide in you, you will bear more fruits and you would win. So if you want to be a winner, then you need to keep abiding in God. You need to keep trusting in God. Hi, Dodoi. Hi, Diessa. Hi, Anu Pande. Hi to every single person who is part of a chapter a day today. We are glad and honored to always have you on the chapter a day. We do not take that for granted at all. And yes, welcome today. Our Bible party is taken from the book of Jonah chapter 2. And this has just 10 verses. Jonah chapter 2 has just 10 verses. And we're hoping that each and every one of you is definitely going to get blessed by whatever we're doing here today. Oh yeah, testimony time, testimony time. So yesterday, before, before um, this... I want to let you know that testimony time is a new thing on a chapter a day and the Holy Spirit inspired it for one reason or the other and we'll be going on and on and on with it. So there's this thing where um, I kind of like always, especially when I'm on holiday, I kind of like always look out for a time to do a chapter a day and all the stuff like that. So, um, yesterday I said I was going to do a chapter a day immediately after service. I was going to do a chapter a day after service. And we had an event, you know, activities and all of that. So, I was helping out during the event. I couldn't really do it. And I said to myself, okay, after that, I'm going to do it. And then I heard my sister saying, oh, we're going home, so let's just go home. And I'm like, okay, so let's just go home and do it at home, right? It's better, you know, it, the positioning and everything of putting my camera and all that kind of stuff is going to be easy for me and so 
um, we we started leaving for the house and all and I realized we weren't really going to the house you know the me before I would be so pissed like so angry and everything I just felt how the Holy Spirit calmed me down and like just let it go and I felt somehow because truth is I was calming because I knew I was going to do this, like we're going home. And then the journey changed and it just kept changing. I'm one person who likes like, if it's straight, straight, if it's right, right, if it's left, please, let's just be on it. Like, you know, um, especially if it's going to affect things like a card or something, you know, I'm really, really keen on that. I don't want trouble, but hey, trouble happened and I was almost getting there and then the Holy Spirit was just like calm down let it go calm down let it go you guys know like <laughs> so we well I had another experience that I'd never really experienced before the sunkran and I'd never really seen how the sunkran thing happened so I had that experience so truly as the word of God says that in everything God works it out together for your good it may not feel good it may not sound good it may not look good at all but believe me, God is working it out for your good. I've had my sister and I were not just so happy about some scenarios and then we ended up realizing that it was the best thing to have happened because God had a plan, God had a purpose. So child of God, as a child of God, I'd advise you what this testimony taught me is that at every point in time, just trust God and let the joy of the Lord be your strength, for real, for real. Like, let the joy of the Lord really, really be your strength. That's what the Bible recommends. And yes, you choose. That means you have to intentionally choose to be okay, to be happy over scenarios, regardless of how they look or what they feel like. That's how it's supposed to be. So yes, greetings to all of you once again. We're glad to have you. This is a chapter a day. If you're just signing on, aka a card for short, and on here we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. And while we're at it, we also create a King James Version of your Bible for your faith growth. We also study the Word of God together so that it becomes a practical reality for you and I. Like we can see ourselves in the Word and know that it was not just done by some people in the old, but it also applies to us. The Word of God is still as applicable to every single person as it was in the olden days as it is right now. Because some people feel like, oh, the Word of God was for some people in the old. And now that they're gone and done, it's, it's just not possible to be able to apply that same Word here. But the truth is, the grace of God, those people of old, they didn't even really have the grace of God per se. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They were walking on based on physical sacrifices, animal sacrifices for the most part, but we, we are basing our own Christianity on the sacrifice of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. He died on the cross, and that sacrifice, that singular sacrifice made all the difference. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm talking. That's why I'm preaching the gospel. That's why I'm loving upon God, because He first of all loved me when I was a sinner, and I, I had nothing. I wasn't worth it at all. I, I, in fact, it was crazy. I was zero. I didn't even deserve it, but he came and died for me. He was dying and he had me in his heart. He had me in his mind. That this I'm doing for Princess Klitsa. Kume Kwene. She's the one I'm dying for right now. I don't know if you personalize it like that, but I know that Jesus went to the cross just for me. Just for me. You have to get it that personal to know that it's a serious thing. And then when you've accepted that sacrifice that he made, you can go about playing. You can go about joking around with your salvation or Christianity, right? Yeah, that's what I believe. That's what I believe. So yes, guys, today we're doing Jonah chapter 2 and he has 10 verses. And of course, we also get to celebrate birthdays. We give shout outs to people who are in our birthday book. And then we pray for every single person who is born on that day. And then we also sing birthday songs to people who are born on particular days. So if you are born on a particular day and you're here in the live stream, as at that time, when the live is going on, we get to sing a birthday song for you. An improvised birthday song, basically. 
so yes if you want your name to be in the birthday book you can just put your birthday in the comment section or better still look for our contact details in the comment section or around this video especially on facebook and then you connect with us and we'll be able to save your birthday and give you a shout out when your day is due and every other person will join us to pray for you right that's how we do on the chapter a day we get to support each other pray for each other love upon each other in every single way that we can um one of our very ardent listeners on popo dora was here on her birthday we sang for her and who else was here on their birthday there there have been a couple of people who are here on the live stream live on their birthdays and we sang for all of them so normally we start with singing after singing we pray after prayer we do the testimonies birthday party shout outs and then prayer and then we go for the bible party where we pray the audio bible and then study the word of god and then we pray for whatever the lord helps us and gives us directions to pray on it could be your prayer request that you send to us it could be a prayer request that we realize while we're studying the word that we need to pray for this for ourselves you know and then we thank god for a great session so that's how we always do it but the lord can actually take us to any turn or any level that he wants us to he's sovereign he's dynamic and because it's a jesus thing and a god thing we're doing here on the chapter today however he chooses to lead us that's exactly how we go okay people so let's pray and then we get started father we thank you for the day that you've made rejoice i'm glad in it we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for your loving kindness we thank you for your tender mercies we thank you for all that you've done you're doing and you're still to do in our lives Lord, you are faithful Father, you are the unchanging God, that is who you are. <coughs> you are ever faithful and ever true. Lord, we do not take for granted all that you do for us, with us, in us, and around us. You are an awesome God. Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. Come and speak to us in a special way like only you would. Lord, we are ready for whatever you have in store for us today. We thank you for a brand new week. We thank you for a brand new day. Lord, we know that you do marvelous things for us. We know that our day is going to be beautiful. Our day is going to be bright. Father, we pray that your word is coming. Let it come with transformation. That as people receive your word today, it's going to give light in their darkness. It's going to direct them. It's going to lead them. It's going to bring divine acceleration. It's going to bring salvation. It's going to bring healing. It's going to bring breakthrough. It's going to bring open heavens and open doors, oh God. Father, release upon your children that which only you can, which will bring a change, an increase, a next level in each and every one of our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Father, let me let me decrease while you increase. So it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of the chapter a day in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for always hearing and answering us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, guys. I just want to find out if we are live. I just remember there's this thing that happens to us sometimes. We think we are live, but we're not. Or we are live, but you can't hear me. I'm hoping that you all can hear me. But we always get these things on um, Facebook where you probably can't even hear me. Let's check it out. Are we there? I go to follow you, the go, follow you, the go. I go to follow you, the go.
guys, it shows that it's not working. Thank you, Lord. It's working. So, yes, so now it's time for the birthday party. Let's celebrate the people who were born today and give them all that is due to them and uh, celebrate them in grander style. Okay. So the first person on our birthday book is Mam Victoria Siri. Mam Victoria Siri, I got to know her through my dad, and she sells a lot of really beautiful stuff. Um, um, I think unisex. It's it's only, I think for ladies and children. I think, yeah, ladies and children basically. If not, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it it might be unisex. But I remember very well that I saw for ladies and children. I know for ladies because I've bought some of my clothes there and they're really 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 beautiful she she goes for class and beauty like you want to really come out stunning and glitz and glamour then you should go to our shop originally you know sometimes people think like oh because I'm working in this 8 to 5 job I can't do no other thing else like you know she's a banker she works at the bank like you know and she still has that shop. So I think on weekends she's there by herself and then on weekdays she's at work and all of that. She's a hustling, amazing lady. Pretty, hardworking, beautiful. You know, sometimes I feel like, oh, beautiful girls are just lazing about and hoping that guys will do some things, one or two things for them. No, that's not the case, yo. That's not the case. Gone are those days. Yes, before. So I think there even still some ladies still they that feel that it's their body and their looks that get to give them whatever they they want. Well, that's not us. There's a group of girls, fine girls we love Jesus, who do Jesus things, who do hard work. We work hard and we earn. We don't sleep around. We don't goof around to get money. Now nah. we don't use what God has given us for foolishness. We use it for good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. So that's Mam Victoria Siri for you. And we have Mam Laura Bisong. Mam Laura Bisong, I met her on um, One Accord Sisters. It's a group that one of my sisters actually put together. We got there, we prayed, we worshiped God, uh, we encourage each other with the things that are happening to us, how we go through situations. You know, sometimes you have this feeling like you're the only one going through. That's what testimony does. It helps you make you understand that you're not the only one going through this scenario. And when the person is giving you that victory, which is their testimony, right? Um, what God did for them through that scenario, you also get assured and encouraged that, oh, God will also come through for you. It may tarry, it may not be as fast as that person's words, but definitely God will come through. If God came through for her, then God is definitely going to come through for me. That's exactly how it works. So, um, Mom Laura Bisson, we in that group. She's an amazing person. She loves God with a passionate passion. And of course, she's also a very great wife. Happy birthday to you, Mom Laura Bisson. The next person is Teacher Annette Bookland. I got to know him in my school. Like, he's a very nice person. And when I got there, they were trying to make, um, they did everything to make sure that the, 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 my stay at the place is beautiful. He always does that and then he, he greets me like all the time he would see me like in the morning and say good every day good morning good afternoon good evening he'll greet me for for the entire day at once he always makes fun like that and when we go for outings he always tries to help me to get comfortable with wherever we go to thank you so much teacher Nick. and he's really cute yeah <laughs> he's a great dad too and he's a great colleague he's a great friend as well happy birthday to you the next person is Mam Rachel Mimi. Mam Rachel Mimi, um, we actually went to the same secondary school together. She's a fighter. She's also very hardworking and very pushful. She's very much business oriented and uh, she likes to see things in order. That's one thing I know about her. We kind of disconnected after secondary school, but we reconnected again on our external institution group. And she also supports the things I do. That's what I'm really, really grateful for. She supports a lot of people. 
when she sees you doing something that is really amazing and really cool, she does all that she can within her power to support you, encouraging you in every single way that she can. The next person is Mr. Sain Moere Phillips. Mr. Sain Moere Phillips, we actually connected on Facebook. His posts and his comments on posts have really inspired me and following him has never been a, a waste, you know. There are some people that you kind of follow just because you saw them do something and then you went and realized that they were not really those kinds of people. They were just putting a face up as at that time that you got to know them. You go to their pages and you have nothing to write home about and you're like, oh, why did I even I just like connect to this person in the first place? You know, me, I always look at comments. I'm a comment session, session person. So I look at comments and then I go follow you. I look at your wall and check things that you do on your wall and then I follow through. So that's exactly what happened. And then the next person is Dr. TK. Dr. TK, I got to know him on FGA. FGA is this really amazing group that we have on WhatsApp that a lot of smart people are there. You see this many, many opportunities that I come and share on my studios or share to you guys inbox. Sometimes it's coming from there. They have all these in-house job opportunities, really excellent opportunities that are available and then they show it to us. And then probably if any of us is interested, we can do it. If we're not interested, we can give it to some other person. And sometimes it baffles me why some people have job opportunities. And because um, whoever gets that job opportunity might probably be higher than them or better than them, they don't give it to those people, even though they know that there are people around them who are qualified for that job. It's a sad scenario with the way the world is going. But hey, thank God for these people in FGA, Friends of Global Ambition. They don't hide jobs. They don't keep jobs. They know that making the next person better is making the society a better place in the whole, as a whole. It's making the society a better place. And that's how we should be thinking. The more light, the brighter, the brighter the intensity, and the more darkness will be taken away. Don't you think so? If I'm at the top and I get five, six, seven more people to the top or ten more people to the top will be eleven and eleven more if in my capacity I could get eleven people to the top then it means that when these people are at the top like I am they can also get eleven people imagine how many will get there and after when all these people are stable and at the top like I am would they also get enough people a lot of people they let's just say averagely everybody who is at the top can get 11 people, 11 more people to the top like themselves. Imagine, I've gotten 11 people. Imagine what those 11 people, they'll also get 11 people, 11 persons each. Imagine that. We're already on thousands. In a short while, the same span of time I used to get 11 of them would use the same span of time to get about 1,000 people to the top at once. Ain't that beautiful? So I don't understand why people think that it's a trick for them to be at the top and get other people be at the top with them. Rather, it is lightning. It's less work. It's less work. And it makes the society grow faster. It makes people's lives better faster. Isn't that a good thing? Don't we all want everybody around us to be fine and comfortable? I don't know about you, but I want everybody in my family to be standing and be able to fend for themselves and, if possible, help other people. Some of them are not even able to really fend for themselves that way, like I desire it to be, but they are helping other people. And that's a good thing. The little light that you have, you have to let it shine. Nobody is going to give you more if the little that they give you, you can't manage well, right? Nobody will do that. And then the next person is... Mr. Fever, Mr. So, so this is my little nephew. I mean, this young man, they grow like there's no tomorrow. They grow like they're actually taking in some fertilizer or something. Like, he was just a baby when I saw him. But now, he's so big and they grow up so fast. Sometimes somebody said, were you waiting that, were you, were you thinking that we're going to wait for you to grow them when you're done growing before we start growing? I mean, like, of course. Technically, that's how it's in my head. It feels like I'll finish growing first before they start growing, you know. But no, they grow along as you're growing, so you see, and they grow really fast. Happy birthday to you, fellow Mr. So, so, amazing young man, growing in wisdom and stature. The next person is drum roll, Mariah, Mrs. Mary Yungong. 
So, Mrs. Mary Nuba Mwakami, I actually got to know her when I was working at a Christian Gospel Radio. It's a friend turned sister. I knew her when I was working at a Christian Gospel Radio. She's very hardworking, she's very pushful. She's a tenacious young woman. I've seen her grow in her business, grow in the things she does. I've seen her double up motherhood, school, and work. Man, this girl is a bulldozer. I mean like she is a bulldozer. If there's anybody that I want to be blessed in this life, it's that sister of mine, it's that friend of mine. I mean she works so hard, she's a great mother, she's a great friend, a great sister, a great worker. I mean you see the way she does all these things, you will think like it's so easy until you try it. Man, if you want to look good, her salon is somewhere around Sissy's Juncture, you can go there. I don't know if they've moved though, she's still there, but I think they're still there. Her saloon is around there. You can go there and come out looking really beautiful. She does things so simple and so nice, you'll be shocked. Yes. And the one that blew my mind all is like, I've had times where it looks like my friends were getting married and they were not wanting to tell me. I don't know why. I don't know, maybe, I, I can't say they would be mean, you know these days, everybody has a way of looking at things. Some people feel like, oh, if they tell you their stuff, it's not going to work. Some people feel like, oh, if they tell you their thing, you probably are going to spoil it or something. I don't know, for whatever reason. A lot of my friends that were really my good friends didn't tell me about their weddings or something. But anyways, I would also say thanks be to God because it was working for my good. How, you say? It was working for my good because, truth be told, some of them were getting married as at the time that I was not really having anything like I, I would not have been able to support them and I would have also felt bad somehow I would have felt really bad that my friend's wedding is happening and I'm not able to give nothing not even just the tiny wincy bitsy little thing I would have felt really bad so God saved me kind of it was a win-win deal so I can't really be mad at all but the one that shocked me was this sister of mine I call Mariah right her wedding was supposed to happen at a particular time. Do you know she chose another date just because she wanted me to be for her wedding and be, not just be at her wedding, but be an MC at her wedding. I was touched and I was taken aback. You know, when I started feeling like all my friends were not, they didn't really care, they didn't want to tell me about their stuff, I don't understand. We are friends, we tell each other like every single thing, we talk about things, we encourage each other, we pray for each other. And then all of a sudden your good things are happening to you and it looks like you don't want to tell me about it. I was like, I was really, really touched to the core of my core. I wasn't even around, I had to come before attending the, the, the wedding. It was beautiful. You needed to see the way they were hyping me, like, it was awesome. That was a beautiful wedding. I'll never forget that. That particular act of love and kindness is beyond human comprehension. I can't even begin to explain it. So you would understand when I say she's a friend turned sister. We've been together like that. We share our burdens. We pray for each other. We support each other. She's in, out, she's in the country. I'm out of the country. But sometimes she's the one who supports me. Yeah taking care of my mom and my family members, my sister. I remember sometimes my sister was still job hunting. She was looking for a job for my sister. She's the one who got my sister to get a really good job, a well-paying job, a good paying job. She was the one who helped my other sister. She has helped a lot of people that are connected to me like that. So people will never do that for you. But she goes all out when it comes to me. When there's something that I need to be done in the country and she can do it, she'll go all out to do it for me. I'm really grateful to you, Mariah. May the good Lord really, really bless you. Great mother of my little model and the little Prince Charming. And to an amazing husband she's married to. They all love God and are serving God together. The last but not the least is my amazing and awesome Filipino son, Caleb. Caleb was born today. So Caleb is one really smart young man that I've gone to know and he's very very emotional and very sensitive he's he has a way of getting you to do things that he wants you to do that you not even know that this is just yeah like you you just find yourself doing it he has a sweet way of cajoling you to do stuff and yes today's his birthday so guys you all should wish him a very special happy birthday and if possible 
sending gifts. <laughs> sending really nice gifts, okay? So, happy birthday to all these amazing people. Let's get to take that again. Happy birthday to Mom Victoire Siri. Happy birthday to Mom Laura A. B. Song. Happy birthday to Janine Buklang. Happy birthday to Mom Rachel Mimi. Happy birthday to Mr. Sam Morine Phillips. Happy birthday to Dr. TK. Happy birthday to Fevo Mesosa. Happy birthday to Mariah, Mrs. Yunga Marie. Happy birthday to my one and only little son, Caleb. Happy birthday to all these people. And that's why we're wrapping up the birthday party for today. But first, we have to pray for the birthday people and then we'll get right on to the Bible party. You know how the drill goes, right? We pray for the birthday people and then get right on to create the audio Bible and then we study the word of God together, which is the Bible party. So let's go. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today. We thank you for adding a new year to their lives. We thank you for increasing them on all sides. Father, we pray, oh God, that you continuously do for them that which no man can do but you alone. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and adoration because you deserve it. You are God all by yourself from beginning till the end. There's no place for arguments. Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Lord, we pray, oh God. That you continuously open the windows of heaven, pouring out the treasures of your blessings upon their lives and rebuking every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you bless them with the treasures of your blessing. That there will be a blessing in their generation and beyond. And anyone who comes in contact with them will literally rub off of the blessings that are upon them, O oh Lord. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you give them every good and perfect gift that comes only from you, O oh Father. We pray that you open doors to them that no man can show. Divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or regress in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destined helpers to and strategically position themselves to be a blessing to these people when the time is right. Also strategically position their destiny helpers all around them so that when they also cry out for help, help is going to be made available to them instantly. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you are a prayer answering God. You never sleep nor slumber. You're never tired of hearing our prayers, O oh Lord. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, and wall changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Lord, increase them on every side. Enlarge their coast. Open their doors for them that only you can do. Lift them to the top and help them to permanently stay there. You're the one who lifts one up and brings down another. Lord, take them to the top and teach them all the strategies and methods and techniques that are necessary for them to not only get to that top, but to get there and stay there permanently. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we know you always hear and answer. Thank you, Everlasting Father, because we know your prayer and shrink God. You deserve all our praise. Receive all the glory, but now and forevermore. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and Amen. Amen. And we also pray, O oh Lord, that money is going to be money in their pockets. Blessings will be blessings in their lives. Favor will be favor in their lives. Even as you close them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. We seal every prayer and request to the blood of Jesus. And we say thank you because we know it is done and dust is signed, sealed, and settled. Whatever the lady hands on, press prayer. Wherever they trade their feet upon, give it to them as a possession. Lord, I pray that you're going to do for them miraculous and wonderful things. Lord, that you perfect all that concerns them and give them a sound 426 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, celebration, jubilation, and dancing all for your glory. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say ginormous, Amen. But I sing the Amen, so let's go. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let it be so. Amen, 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 amen. In their lives. Amen. I say I pray. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Seal the prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In their lives. As with. Great. God bless you all tremendously. May you feel your bounds with all good things and large your posts and do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so, so very much, but God loves you way, way more. 
have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime, mais je vous aime plus plus fort que moi. Joyeux anniversaire à vous tous. Welcome once again, Rabia. Welcome, Loli Jane. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all our amazing people who are in the building. Welcome to Mr. Fungio. Oh my word. You're here today, man of God. Thank you for coming. So let's keep going. It's time for the Bible party. That's where we read the Bible. We create an audio Bible. And after creating the audio Bible, we get to start studying the word. So let's get on. Like I said today, it's Jonah chapter 2. Welcome, Fabio. <laughs> Julian Fabio. Welcome. He always comes and he doesn't sit on the panel. I don't know. I hope he tasks already. Okay. And glad to have you all. So let's get this Bible party started. If you're just signing in, this is a chapter a day, aka a card for short. On here, we get to study the Word of God together every single day. We get to pray. We get to um, create an audio Bible for your faith growth. And then we get to celebrate birthdays and do testimonies. For whatever reason it is, that's how people don't like to give testimonies in all the places. You can comfortably give your testimony here by writing it in the comment section or requesting to come live so that we can add a face to the name. That is just awesome. I love it when people request to come live. That's the best part of it all. Okay, guys? So, yes, you can do the same. You can also request to come live and be a part of a chapter a day live and direct and we'll be very very grateful that you did we'll be very grateful so let's go guys are you ready ready or not here i come jonah chapter 2 then jonah prayed unto the lord his god out of the fish's belly and said i cried by reason of mine affliction unto the lord and he heard me out of the belly of hell cried i and thou heardest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the floors compassed me about, all thy billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul, the depth closed me round about, the weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I will pay that I have. But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land this is the word of the lord and all the same shall say ginormous thanks be to god guys we are at it again we are on jonah so the last time we left on here we're talking about how jonah was captured in the fish's belly and uh, we're saying a lot of things we learned a lot of things in all of that chapter one that Sometimes someone might be going through a tough time and thinking that they're disobeying God and being nonchalant and God will still use them for his glory. Like how the people on the ship, the Tashishians or whatever they call those people, wherever they're going to. And they got to know God. They got to revere God. They got to respect God. They got to learn about God and then they gave sacrifices unto God. That's how people showed their reverence for people that they honored and people that they revered. So that's exactly what was happening. Jonah thought that he was just being stubborn and going someplace. And the Lord allowed him because the Lord had another plan for him. The Lord still had to use him regardless. 
I would still let you go to Nineveh, but before you go to Nineveh, you think you're being stubborn. In your stubbornness, I'm still going to use you for people. So sometimes, even when we go astray, you, you wonder why it feels like the Lord is still using some people, even though they've gone astray. You know, there are some people who are doing all kinds of crazy things. And some of them are pastors, some of them are preaching and all those kinds of things. And you wonder how they're still just doing things, you know. They're still just prospering and working and all of that. You begin to wonder how. It's God. It's God. Welcome, Azel. Welcome, Trace Alvarez. Welcome, Sanuk. Thank you for coming. So, yes, we continued from there. And then these people dropped and we saw how these people could act like... They were, they, they, were, they were held in restraint, probably by God, so they didn't do anything foolish to Jonah. And even when Jonah told them to do something that sounded too foolish to them, they didn't want to do it. And they tried and tried and tried, and God didn't allow them to do it, regardless, you know, like that. So yes, that's how they, they threw Jonah into the sea, and then the Lord sent the big fish to capture him. And so Jonah was given his experience in the fish's belly how he felt, how it looked like. No, he was given his experience from when he fell into the deep and how the experience was and how, how it went. So this is what he was explaining here. And the explanation is just something that you don't even want to experience. It's something that you don't want to go through. You don't want to go through that kind of stuff. You don't wish some of these really crazy things that you go through even for your enemies. I tell you the truth. There are some things that I've gone through, depression and all those things. I never would wish that even for my enemy because it is a crazy place to be. It's a crazy state to be in. So I wouldn't even wish that for my enemy. So Jenna was saying, the good thing that I want us to understand is where he started. He started by going back to God in prayer. Yes, you've made a mistake. Don't let the enemy fool you that, oh, a whole man of God like you. I'm sure Jonah had been serving God. I'm sure he had done really wonderful things for the kingdom, like, you know, and that. And God had been using him. Up until this time where God saw him capable of going to Nineveh to go and preach the gospel. Sure, he should have been doing something. Because the Bible says, start preaching your Samaria, Judea, and then you go to the ends of the earth. Some people just want to leave their Samaria. They don't want to preach their Samaria. They want to go to the ends of the earth. And not... The difficult ends of the earth, huh? they want to go to the posh and the beautiful and the, I don't know what to call it, the nicest ends to the earth, ends of the earth. But meanwhile, there are also ends of the earth that are not as nice. They don't want to go there. They don't want to go there. So the idea is not really to go preach the gospel. The idea looks to them like they're going for a fun time, they're going for enjoyment and all those kinds of things. So that's why you see a lot of missionaries who are some missionaries who are in Africa. They want to go to places here in Europe, America for evangelism and missionary work. Meanwhile, there are villages in Africa, some really interior places that they don't know about God. They don't want to go to those places. They think it's like some enjoyment trip, some leisure trip to them. It's not a leisure trip. It's a leisure trip in the kingdom sense of it. When you're going for kingdom purposes, honestly. But it's not a leisure trip as the world sees leisure trip. But that's how some fake people who claim to be missionaries and Christians see it. So that's why they don't want to go to these interior villages. They'll rather go to other European countries or American countries or something like that or Asian countries. Welcome Time Claire. Welcome Reza. Thank you all for coming. So the enemy might fool you and might convince you and tell you that with all that you have been, with all your Christianity that you really messed up like this, God is not going to forgive you. It's a lie. He's the only one that had so messed up that he doesn't have a chance at repenting anymore. So he tries to convince a lot more people to also believe that so that they're not going to repent and then they will lose out. That's what he does. That's what he does. That's exactly what he does. So please don't fall for it. I beg of you, don't fall for it. Do not. Do not fall for it. So he goes on and he starts praying to God. He goes back to God. Yes, I've made a mistake. I have disobeyed God. I have gone against the, the, the beatings of God. But right now, 
the situation is actually very critical, so I must pray. Regardless of, there are some times that when you don't feel like you pray, that's the time when you should even pray. When you don't feel like praying, force yourself to pray. And if possible, just allow the Holy Spirit to pray to you. They say that when we do not know how to pray, the Holy Spirit prays through us with groanings that cannot be uttered. That time the prayer is even more intense and, and more real because it's coming from your spirit man, not from you. Honestly, honestly speaking, there are times when I'm praying with my physical mind, I kind of like deviate, like some thoughts start coming to my head and then I'm out of prayer at one point in time and then I'm asking the Holy Spirit to help me to bring me back and then he brings me back and stuff like that. But when you're in the Spirit, believe me, you are done, like you are gone. You don't even sense some of these physical things. I mean, when I pray in the Spirit, like in the Holy Ghost, I pray longer than any other time ever. When I'm praying normally, right, I don't really pray for long. In all honesty, I don't really pray for long when I'm praying normally. But when I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, I could pray for hours on end. Oh, yeah. So, the Spirit of God helps you to pray. So, as at that time when you feel like you shouldn't pray, that's when you should pray. Push yourself to pray and pray. Just start thanking God if you can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I bless you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you, Father. I give you all the praise. Just go like that from there. If possible, start singing. And then you see yourself will just be soaked. And then you get there. I don't know how it works for you, but it works for me all the time. So Jonah decided to pray. He was praying. In the fish's belly, he started praying. He started praying. And he cried. Cried out to God. And he heard me out of the belly of hell. He, called, he felt like hell. And thou heardest my voice. For thou hadst cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea. And the floods come past me round about. All thy billows and thy waves passed over me. He had all kinds of experiences. It felt like, you know how when people say, oh, I felt like that. I felt like I was dead already. I felt like I was in the depths of hell. Like, you know when people give these their near-death experiences? I'm sure that's something that Jonah experienced. Up until ending up in the belly of a fish. I mean, he probably just knew that his end had come. I've done all these wrong things. I've spoiled everything with God. Let me better just fix this one last one. And then if I'm going right now, let me go that I'm saved. So that's when he started saying that in his afflictions and his, all his trouble, he called on God. The, good, the truth is, at every point in time, you can call on God. Let's not make it a habit to only call on God when we're in tough situations. That's what a lot of Christians do nowadays. When they are fine, they don't even think of God. They don't even bother to commune with God. They don't even bother to fellowship with God. But when they are in dire situations, they call on God. I'm not saying that that is bad. God wants you to call on Him regardless. But please, let's make it a habit to be able to call on God when we are fine and call on God when we're not fine. You understand? We should not only call on God, we should not only fellowship and cry out to God only when we're fine, when we're not fine. Even when we're fine, we should learn to thank God, you know, call on Him in thanksgiving, call on Him in praise and worship, call on Him on behalf of other people. You understand? Yes, like that. So he says, Then I said, I'm cast out of thy sight, yet I look again toward thy holy temple. Yeah, I don't care. I've made a mistake. I've gone astray. I've derailed. But you see, right now, the situation warrants me to look back to you. It's only to you. There's help from nowhere. Help comes only from you. I've known that. Yes, I made a mistake and I went out. I made a mistake and I went astray. Lord, I am looking back to you because my help can only come from you. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee. He will not slumber and not sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade. Upon the right hand. Upon the right hand. And no, the sun shall not smite thee by day. Nor the moon by night. 
Until the hills, he's my strength. All of my help coming from the Lord. Our help comes from God alone. There's no other place where you can get help from. So regardless, yes, we want that you should cry out to God when you are in need and when you have. But yes, if you've not been crying out to Him when you have, when you are in need, still cry out to Him. He will still come through for you. But please, let's learn to call on Him and seek Him and love upon Him and commune with Him when we're in good times or when we're in bad times. It is important. And it says, the waters, the waters compassed me about, even to the soul. The death closed me round about. The wheat were wrapped about my head. Yeah, that's how when he was going, before the fish opened his mouth and swallowed him, he went through all these things. You know, there's seaweeds and all those kinds of things. So he's giving a real experience. This is showing you that this was actually a real experience. It's not just a parable. It's something that really, really happened in real time. It was a life experience. You know, there are lots of times that God gives us parables to explain things. And he says it will be as unto this. As unto this. But when he's given this kind of testimony clearly, this is Jonah giving his testimony, actually. So when they're talking like this is a real life scenario. But when he says, as at, he's giving you an example. It's a parable. He's giving you a story to explain something so you understand it better. But this ain't any parable. This was a real thing that he went through. We know about seaweeds. We know about how the bottom of the sea can be. We've, we've not been there, but we've seen it. People have documentaries and all on social media where you can find out how the bottom of the sea can be and how it can be scary and how it can look so dreadful and all of that. So he had all these weird experiences before, before the fish swallowed him. And yes, sometimes God will allow us, and that's why I say I'm in the WhatsApp, I'm in the Jonah WhatsApp group. The Jonah WhatsApp group of the part where, Lord, if I'm making a mistake, if I'm going astray, Give me the hardest knock that you can. Even if it means a Jonah experience, Lord, I am ready. Even if it means that you should do more than the Jonah experience, Lord, I am ready. Because I don't want to miss your perfect will for my life. I want to be in your perfect will for my life. I'm not saying that I want to be a Jonah person like I want to go getting stubborn to God. No. Nobody really intentionally wants to be disobedient to God. Sometimes the assignment is just overwhelming. Sometimes you're just scared. Sometimes you're just afraid. And those are all the weapons of the enemy. You can't use the weapons of the enemy and get over. You can't use the enemy's weapons to win him. No, you can't. It's not possible. When you use the enemy's weapons, you only get into trouble. More trouble and more trouble and more trouble. So some people, they don't, they don't obey God not because they really outrightly don't want to obey God. They have just too many things in their head that is telling them all these other things that instead of looking at what God thinks and how God feels, they are looking at all these other things. How my family feel? How my parents feel? How my mom, my brothers and sisters? How will my colleagues feel? How will the world feel? How will people look at me? What will people say? It's, not, it's always supposed not to be like that. In this life, eh, get to a place where it is, what does God think about it? How does God feel about it? When those things are in check, if God feels okay about it, you feel okay about it, boom, get on it. Sometimes you might not even feel okay about it. But if you know that God feels okay about it, which means it's God who sent you to do the thing, then get on it, step on it. The end result will be amazing. It will blow your mind. It always does. It always does. So, I want to be, I'm in Jonah's WhatsApp group in the sense that, Lord, there are some people that, this is it in, straight, in the straightest form. There are some people that the Lord will call and give an assignment. And the people will not want to do the assignment. And He will let them go. But there are others that when He gives you an assignment, He will make you do it. He will not force you, but He will just do things around you that will push you to do your assignment. That's me. That's what I want. I want that. That if, if, if it gets to the point, the worst comes to the worst, that I mistakenly want to run away, he will bring me to do it. He will do everything. With, I've given him the leverage. I've given him that authority over my life. I don't know about you, but that's on you. On me. 
I want God to always give me this general experience the time that I try to derail. If I just if my leg just steps away from the path that I'm supposed to be on, he should if it's to break it, he should break it and put it back on the right track. I don't have any problem with that. God has given you the leverage and he does it then. He has been doing it so far. The times that I do that stupidity, he would hit me so hard. <clears throat> the pain will so bring me back to my senses and on the track that nobody will push me. Oh yes. Oh yes. So I love it. I love when God does that. He has been faithful on his part. And it has made me to stay on track too, which is good. And it says, I went down to the bottoms of the mountain. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet has thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. The Lord brought him out, right? He didn't die. He probably was thinking, this, this are his last words. He's praying to God and making things right. You know, and that's what it is with Jesus, huh? It's not about how long you've been in sin. It's not about how long you've been in Christ. It says it's without spot nor wrinkle. So if he comes on that day and you're without spot or wrinkle, you'll be taken. Whether you have been the worst of the worst of the worst of sinners, if the trumpet sounds today, after you just finished giving your life to Christ, you are a candidate for heaven. You will spend eternity in heaven. If you, you have been serving God for the rest of your life and you sinned that day without repenting, you are a candidate for hell, darling. So we have to be careful. We have to be careful. We have to examine ourselves daily to be sure that we're still in the faith. Okay. What's going on? It says, When my soul fainted within me, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thy holy temple. Yeah. His, his soul had filled him. His mind had filled him and all. He thought that he was running away. He was doing the right thing. Ah, everything filled. He came back to God now. He came back. Says, um, but I sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanks. No, they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with a voice of thanks. Even I will pray that that I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Only the Lord can save you. See, true saving, true salvation. It's only in God. Only God can truly save you. The arm of flesh will fill you. The arm of flesh will give you wala. The arm of flesh will get you to the wrong places. It might look like it's saving you at some point, but the way it would throw, the way it would, it would throw you off, you'll be shocked. The way the arm of flesh can throw you off, I mean, I tell you the truth. People have gone through things because of trusting and depending in the arm of flesh. People have gone through crazy things. May the good Lord help us in Jesus' name. And the Lord spake unto the fish and vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. I would dare to say, eh, when he was praying and saying all that he was praying, nothing happened. But when he started doing thanksgiving, there's a lot of things that can that thanksgiving can do. Even Jesus, we saw lots and lots of times where he just took bread and fish and prayed and gave thanks to God and multiplication the prayer of thanksgiving eh, is a prayer that you can pray as many times as possible as often as possible any single time you can pray the prayer of thanksgiving it's not limited you cannot thank god enough you understand you cannot thank god enough you cannot thank god enough so you can keep thanking god every single time every single day every single minute every single moment you can keep thanking god you can't thank God enough. Yes, that's the truth. So people of God, I beg of you, with everything that I have there, learn how to keep thanking God. Learn how to go to God with a prayer of thanksgiving. He was sure in his heart that God had saved him, that God had delivered him. And so he got to a point and started thanking God. He said that all those who trust in, this, in, in vanities, all those who trust in these worldly things and all these worldly methods to save them, you are forsaking mercy. Mercy will not be able to speak for you because you are saying that mercy, I don't need you because this person can help me. Mercy, I don't need you because this thing can help me. Mercy, I don't need you because this strategy can help me. But no. They've trusted in those things and they forsook mercy and they got into much and much and much more trouble than ever before child of god depend on god 
depend and rely on God. Depend and rely on God. True saving and true salvation can come only from God. I can promise you that without any of doubt. True saving and true salvation can come only from God. So yes, people, this is where we're wrapping up today with a chapter a day. It has been a beautiful time spent with you. Hope you have a great week ahead. Hope the Lord blesses you, increases you, and does really marvelous things for you that only He can do. I always get to say, I love you so very much, but God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates. Each time we'll upload a new video or we'll go, get to go live like right now, okay? Tomorrow is another day. By the grace of God, we'll be here with Jonah chapter 3. Don't miss out. Don't, don't be absent. Always come through. And yes, send us your birthdays so that we can register it in our birthday books and get to celebrate you when your time is due. So today we're praying that the Lord will help us not to only pray to him when we're in trouble, but to pray to him at all times. Not to only commune with him when we're in trouble, but to commune with him at all times. But yes, also help us to remember that regardless of how far we've gone, regardless of the mistakes we've made, we always have the opportunity to come back to him. Let's pray. Father, we come before your train of grace this day, O oh Lord, and bring before you all your children all over the world. Help us to understand that. Praying to you and communing with you should not only be a thing of when we're in difficult situations, when we're in challenges, when we're in difficult moments, oh Lord. It should be a thing of every day and every moment. Because when you're in love with someone, you want to be with the person all the time. You want to talk with the person all the time. You just want to be around the person all the time. That's the same way it should be with you. Because we are your bride. And if we say we are your bride, then we should want to be with you all the time. We should want to be around you all the time. So Lord, teach us that. And also help us, O oh God, to get the understanding that it is very, very, very much possible that we can also be in you. We can also be in you, Lord, that we can also call on you when we're in difficult situations. That we should not let the enemy play fast one on us and cause us to miss out on the things that we can benefit while calling on you, especially in difficult moments. Lord, that we will not feel guilty, we will not feel bad. To want to call you but we'll feel the strong desire to want to call you because our help can come only from you true salvation comes only from you thank you lord for hearing and answering us for in jesus name we pray amen okay guys tomorrow is another day like i said jonah chapter 3 get started before time and by the grace of god we'll be here to continue with the book of jonah and yes thank you all so much for being present all of you who came through Emma the Goose, Gooseman, um, Jed, thank you, thank you, thank you, all of you, and every other person who came through. We are grateful. Have a beautiful week so far. Have a beautiful start, beautiful Monday. I wish you all the very best. Don't forget, our audio Bible is on all social media platforms. The chapter idea gets to keep the devil away. Listen. While you're working, while you're doing your activities, you can listen. It makes it easier. And listen, even when you feel like you don't understand. When the time is you, the Holy Spirit is going to bring it to your remembrance. I always tell you that. I've experienced the time without number. Where there's some scriptures that the Holy Spirit brings to my remembrance. I even think that it's an English adage or something like that. But it turns out being that it was the Word of God. It turns up, it ends up being that it was the Word of God. It was not just some English adage that I learned somewhere. So yes. Thank you all so, so very much. Father, we are grateful for all that you've done, you're doing, you're doing in our lives, oh God. Father, we're grateful to today. We pray that your word be engrafted on the fleshy tables of our hearts so that we're going to go thereby. That we'll be living a piece of bread of man. People will read our lives and want to get to know you, want to get to love you, want to get to continue with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you're going to guide the rest of our day. That this day, this week, this season and this time is going to be a beautiful one for us all. All for your glory. Thank you, Father, because we know you always hear and answer. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Jainamas, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Zuka Villas first. And then Popo Villas. Amazing.